And hello again everyone and welcome back to The Longest Journey. Now if you last remember, April Ryan had broken into the police station archives and had erased the data on Warren Hughes, making it look like he was dead, and finding out the location of his sister. In exchange for that, Warren has, has given her the name of a hacker known as Burns Flipper. And he says that Burns can help her find out more about the Church of Voltec and the Vanguard, and can get her a fake ID, which will let her get closer to the Vanguard and find out what's going on with them. And that's where we had kind of left it. She had just left Warren Hughes's, um, well, the slum he lives in. So let's catch up with April again and continue the longest journey. And where are you going, April? Uh, random mouse click. Okay, let's get duck hovercraft. Okay, I'll stop doing that. Now. Um, yeah. Burns Flipper's down near the docks, so we need to head over to the Newport docks. Which is here, apparently. Apparently they don't use the docks anymore, we're told, because everything's done by hovercraft now, or something. That thing hasn't sailed for years. It's just a big hunk of rust with paint on it now. The shipyard's been closed down, but all the machines are still there. It's a wonder nobody's bothered to dismantle it to prevent accidents. I only went through that because it's kind of an interesting um, comparison between Newport, which isn't a port anymore apparently, and Mercuria over in Arcadia, which is a huge major seaport. Remember we talked to a ship captain there, so... And there's cars floating around too. Man, walk slowly over to it, April. Hey, cool! It's a 2032 Camaro in prime condition! Gas-guzzling automobiles was my secret passion before I turned 13. They were so much more fun than boys. Still are, really. Yeah, okay. Thanks for that insight into your psyche there, April. Alright, um... Let's go over here and see if we can find Burns Flipper. Now, apparently he's under a door with some big tubes, and we have to knock on the door three times. So, yeah, there's the tubes, and so let's knock on the door three times. that come from? I'm April Ryan, Warren's friend. I don't know anybody named Ryan, so how about fucking off? Warren called you on my behalf. Warren Hughes, you know Warren, right? Didn't I tell you to fuck off? Yeah, but... So, fuck off already. Am I stuttering here? Jesus H. Christ, you'd think that fuck off would be clear enough as it is for even a slag like you to understand. I'm not a slag. Ah, so you're a gangbanger. Baby, there ain't enough here worth shit, you know? I got no beat with your posse, so fuck off. No, no, I'm... A corp, yeah. I'd recognize a corp bitch anywhere. I'm legit, no funny stuff. Got my corp permit right here in my little hand two weeks ago. And I only do inventory by appointment, so you're gonna have to phone me up there, toots. Could you, like, shut up for just one second? Chill out! I'm April Ryan. I'm a friend of Warren's, who apparently is a friend of yours, and he called you a short while ago to let you know he's cashing in on a favor. Does any of this ring a bell? Ring a bell? Ding dong, the witch is dead. What are you, like a cliche movie chick? Yeah, it fucking rings a bell, but not the bell you'd like to hear. Think it was born yesterday? Like jacking in on a satellite conversation isn't in the fucking guidebook to good corporate surveillance? Jesus. Corps always underestimate the blipper. Like, I fight because I see a babe in tight pants. I don't think so. 
You know, if the fate of two worlds didn't depend on me, I'd tell you to go straight to hell. Did I mention blow me, baby? Could you blow me really hard? Well, you're such a bastard. Listen, if I was out to arrest you, don't you think I'd have brought an army of corporate goons? You got a point. April Ryan, huh? Shit, my channel was warm and scrambled anyway. Top of the line African scrambler. Fucking impossible to hack unless you're the flipper. You're telling me that that you knew who I was the whole time? Are you a psychopath or something? Or something. Sure, babe. Hey, hold on. Uh, personally, I think we're going to go with Psychopath April. That seems to work pretty well. And this is the second time in this chapter that April has endured a carpet F bombing. Yeah, YouTube's going to be so happy with me. Now, this scene always bothers me, because it's obviously we're on a observation camera of some kind from Sashadri Industries or something. Um, I don't know if that means that this is how... Um, Burns Flipper is watching her, or if he's under observation by someone else. Don't know. So let's see where he goes. And here we are. There's Burns over there. Let's talk to him. Yeah, he's kind of a... You'll get it. Hello? Are you Burns? Yeah, chill out, baby. Chill. Be there in a sec. How'd you get down here? Who the hell are you? I knocked, you let me in, we spoke only a few minutes ago. Warren's friend April? Warren who? I don't know any Warren. Oh, Warren, right, yeah, Fire Lizard. Zeke. He's a good supplier. The Flipper likes him. Likes him good. You a buddy of his? Yeah, oh, you his baby, yeah. Oh, sure, I date 15 year olds all the time. Whatever. So, what the fuck do you want? First of all, April, you're 18. 15 isn't that much younger. Although, I guess he probably doesn't like a kid to you. Um, anyway. I need some information. So visit the fucking library. Or go bother the Oracle or whatever. The Flipper can't help you. That's too bad. I guess Warren was wrong about you. Yeah. Hey, what? What was he wrong about? About you being the best there is at getting information. Any kind of information. I guess you can't help me. Fuck yeah, I'm the best. Best there ever was, better than Chocolat. I'm the king of data streams, the emperor of the feed, baby. What kind of information do you need? I need information on a guy called Jacob McAllen and an organization called the Vanguard, or the Church of Voltec. Sounds pretty heavy. I gotta tell you, Voltec's and shit, they got security, top of the fucking food chain. You got something concrete for me to go on here, huh? Besides names, names are nothing. What do you mean? Details! Gods and the Jesus is in the details, woman! There's a fucking ocean of info out there. Gotta know where to start, what to focus on, where do I begin? Give me a map! Yeah, the game started in... It's 1999, so obviously we don't have Google. Now, I just need to give him the data cube, but I can't access my inventory while a conversation is up. So I have to exit Thanks the conversation. The flipper. I'm the flipper. The flipper. Call me Burns. Yeah, beautiful. Ha. See ya. Yeah, I have to exit the conversation, and once he goes to his little animation, he gets back down there. Then I can open the inventory, get the data cube we got from the police station, and give it to him. Hey, Burns? I'll be right up! I got this data cube from the police station. Yeah, so what the hell is on it? You asked for details? This thing has details. Plenty of it, I hope. And you expect me to sort through this shit for you, locate the relevant information, dive into the big blue sea of corporate security, and fish out whatever it is you need from the feed? Could you? Please? Shit, you're cute. But if you weren't Warren's little plaything, I'd kick you out. And eh, whatever. Hand it over and I'll give me a few minutes. All right, and let's be honest here, April has no idea what's in that data cube. She just found it in a file. 
Unfortunately, April's lucky. I guess that comes with being a shifter and the most important in the most important person in two worlds. Yeah. And we have to sit here and wait through this whole aggravating sequence while Burns Flipper flips down there. This old grab chair. Holy macaroni, you do know what the fuck you're fucking with here, yeah? You do know, don't you? These guys are the fucking epitome of uncoolness. It's good stuff, though. Precious information. And I gotta hand it to you, sexy. You know what you were doing bringing this to the flip stop. So, what can you tell me about the Vanguard? Is there anything in there about where they're located and how to get access to their files? Shit! Aren't you a little too eager to trot with the beast, babe? Slow down, chill. I'll tell you what you need to know. But first, take a look at this recording. Just step over to the screen there, and I'll play it back for you, okay? To join in the effort, we must charge forward into a new era of compassion, companionship, and goodwill. An era of expansion and enrichment. A golden era. We must forge a future for ourselves, our children, and our children's children that can withstand the forces that oppose us. We shall be victorious. What the Church of Voltec was created to do is bring spirituality back into our lives and into our world. Spirituality and knowledge. Our enemies have suppressed the truth for too long. We can no longer stand idly by while they spread their lies and their disinformation to the people of our planet. We must fight back. We must take to arms and defend ourselves against our oppressors. I am not, by nature, a man of violence, nor are you. I know that. But the time comes when all people must do their duty to protect their ideology and to preserve their beliefs. That time has come. Our time has come. We will do what we must to protect ourselves and our family. We will do what we must to defend our beliefs against the heretics. We will go to war if that's what it takes. Who was that? He was incredibly charismatic, but cold. Who do you think? Your friend and mine, Mr. Jacob McGowan. Head honcho of the Church of Voltec, or the Vanguard if you wish. Suppose a peaceful philosopher dude. Not the case, as it turns out. Obvious Hitler complex, real Nazi wannabe. This is heavy, dangerous shit you got here, and I love it. But I thought the Church of Voltec was a peaceful religion dedicated only to meditation and philosophy. You and 20 billion other souls, Missy. This is the truth, it's clear as simple as butter. Now take a look at this, on the screen again. Who's this? That's ah, a guy named Gordon Halloway. Evil looking dude, huh? Turns out he's McAllen's right hand man, runs the Vanguard's secret ops. There's a gold mine of info on this data cube. Yeah! The Vanguard have a bunch of agents that they've bred in tanks. Their grasp of genetic engineering far surpasses anything I've seen so far. I've seen everything. From what I can tell, the Vanguard are up against an enemy they call the Fathers or the Sentinel. I don't know who the fuck they are, but I'll find out. Must be the good guys, though, if they're fighting these creeps. Anyhow, this guy Gordon, he was originally intended for some kind of religious duty, whatever the hell it was, for the Sentinel dudes. Let's say, like, Dalai Lama or whatever. But the Vanguard kidnapped him before he was ready, and they did some shit with him, some experiments to try to use his powers, and I'm thinking this spiritual crap. It's just bullshit. But, both the Vanguard and these Sentinel dudes, they believe this kid has powers, 
that he's destined for something very important, so when the Vanguard grab him, that's like, holy shit, fucking big deal. What kind of experiments did they perform on the child? Weird fucking things. Trying to control these powers he has? They fuck up big time, though. And the kid is totally screwed up. Split in half in some spiritual way. One part chaotic, the other pure logic. So now this dude Gordon, he's like the coldest motherfucker you'll ever meet, so stay out of his way. According to these documents, he'll kill somebody for cutting in line ahead of him, which I'll do too. You know, or like coughing in his own direction, which I'd fucking lop your head off for, but anyway. Now, he runs the whole dark side of the Church of vault and I'm guessing he's next in line to take over. After old man McCallum leaves this earthly realm, which could take ages, I'm afraid, with the tech these guys got. How come the police were able to gather this much information on the Vanguard, and yet they don't do anything about it? I don't know, maybe it's routine. Maybe they want something on the bastards to pressure them when they really need to. And maybe the information just got lost in the system. The fact is, though, that with assholes like these walking among us, we're not safe. None of us. Least of all you. So please don't hang around longer than necessary. Yeah. So, okay, these guys are badasses. And I should stay as far away from them as possible. Disregarding that, however, where are the Vanguard headquarters? Uh, you're either very brave or very stupid, Chiquita. But, whichever it is, I shouldn't tell you. Why? Because I'm a girl and I can't take care of myself? No, because anybody who fucks with these guys is sure to end up with a bullet lodged in the back of their skull. Or worse. I'll take that chance. Shit. You know, I'm the flipper. The flipper. I'm not into this shit, you know. I'm strictly into sales and profit. This detective shit you're doing. What the hell is it? Are you... Why are you doing it? That's a very long story. It's some other time, yeah? I really need that information, Mr. Flipper. Okay, chill, dick smack. I got it. I got it. You see, the church has several unofficial headquarters round and about, but they're insignificant. Cover operation, basically. There's no concrete address on this data cube you gave me, but I scanned it through some online records quickly, and I discovered that the Voltex, the Vanguard, are linked to a very big company indeed. Which is? MTI, Malkuth Technologies Incorporated. Big guys. Almost as big as Bokamba Mercer. Freak the hell out of me. But it looks like the head honchos of the Vanguard may be running MTI. Which is kind of funny, because I got some beef with MTI. Some heavy duty beef. And now I got something to hit them back with, fuckers. What does that mean? That MTI is run by the Vanguard? It means that wherever the corporate headquarters of MTI are, you'll probably find the Vanguard elite. And do you know where the MTI corporate headquarters are located? I'm the flipper, dude! What the fuck do you think? Shit! Don't answer that. Grendel Avenue. I don't know where that is. You don't know where Grendel Avenue is? Holy Christ! You're kidding, yeah? It's like the numero uno neighborhood in Newport. Only the top dogs live there. Apartments go for hundreds of millions of dollars. How do I get there? Sorry, babe. A slag like you are stuck on the ground level for all eternity. There's no stepping up in the world for you. you gotta have proper ID, top-level ID, to get to Grendel Avenue. And you don't, babe. Sorry. All right. After that long visit from the exposition fairy, uh, I let it play through because there's a lot of important things there. Um, the primary thing probably is the fact that Gordon Holloway is pretty obviously the man who is supposed to be the next Sentinel. And they talk about splitting him in two, and they separated him into a logic half and a chaos half, which is, again, the obvious split between um, Stark and Arcadia. So, yeah, he's pretty much the Sentinel. And if he's here in Stark, that must mean the chaos half in of him is somewhere in Arcadia. And, okay, I'm going to give you a major spoiler here. The chaos cloud we met way back in the prologue, that's the chaos half of Gordon Holloway. But anyway, um, yeah, so obviously we need to get on into figure out how to get Burns here to give us a ID to get up to see the MTI headquarters. So we need to talk to Burns some more. Hey, Burns? I'll be right up. What is it? 
Could you fix me up with some fake identification? Why would you want that? How else am I going to get to Grendel Avenue? Hey, I'm warning you, don't fuck with those Vanguard shitheads. Yeah, they bite. And I bet you they don't let go like fucking... What do you call those little fucking dogs that don't let go? Pitbull Terriers? Shit. Man, those things are nasty. Fucking wicked nasty. Pitbull Terriers? All right. Uh, one thing I forgot to say a few minutes ago is that the Church of Voltec apparently has this reputation of a religion of peace and meditation. But when we saw Jacob McGowan on the screen um, addressing people, he was apparently addressing a huge crowd somewhere. So if there's these huge crowds that he's preaching, um, we must conquer our enemies and our opponents, which is obviously, you know, the vanguard desire to merge Stark and Arcadia back together again. That was a huge crowd there. Who? Why was there no press or anyone not knowing what they're really about? But anyway, keep on with this conversation. Can we discuss the fake identification I need? Baby, I gotta tell you, it's gonna cost you cash only. You got a lot of cash? Lots of it. You better come it out of your ears, baby. And sorry, friend of a friend and all, but it ain't cheap. And I advise you to forget about it pronto. Let me worry about that. How much will it cost me? I have, like, $300. Ha! Ha ha! Try 20K on for size, shortcake. Sorry, little missy, but fake IDs cost a moolah. I need to buy a properly generated key from a connection downtown. I need an authorized blank card. You're an idiot. They don't come cheap, that stuff. Even if I cut out my profit, which for a friend of Warren's, I just may. <laughs> It'll still come to $15,000, baby. Would you consider alternative forms of payment for a fake ID? Sorry, Chiquita. That urge disappeared with my little legs. No! Oh, not that! God forbid! More like a, a favor or something you need. Don't think I need Whoa! It. God! Shit, it gets me every time. What's up with your chair? Ah, the anti-grav control unit is fried like fried taters, brainiac. Ah, it'll be gone, gone, gone for a good in a few days. But I hope my good friend, my buddy, my mate, Freaky Sales, gets me a new one. Before that, so it don't fall down. If I get you a new anti-grav control unit, would that get me a fake ID? <laughs> if you found a good one that actually works, and one that can lift more than 200 kilos, hey, sure. Like you're gonna find one. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. I just want to point out that we actually know where there's an anti-gravity control unit because there's a crashed hovercraft in front of the police station that has one dangling from the side of it. Now we just have to get there. Now, how do I get out? There we go. Um, now let's just point out that there was a police officer standing out in front of it, but the police officer was coughing because he was having trouble with dust. So let's look at this machine because it's somehow related to that. MTI Industrial Strength Paint Shaker. So it's a device for shaking paint then. That's so last century. Yeah, MTI, it seems nice to use their own technology against them, doesn't it? Let's take this soda can that we bought in the police station and let's put it in the paint shaker. I think that's quite enough. Yeah, that's one pretty bulgy soda this is can. volatile stuff. I'd better get rid of it as soon as possible. Or in other words, we need to head back to where we're going to use it. All right. We know where the police officer is that was in front of the police station. So we need to get over there. And this game really needs a fast travel option. Because even though I'm making April run here, it's still taking her forever to go across some of these screens. And, you know, if I could just click on police station, I know how to get there. It's not like I have to do this. This is no challenge to me as a player. This is just, oh, well, let's see if we can 
wait for the screen to load. Yes, I know you're proud of the screen and the artwork that went into it, but we've seen it already. Alright, enough of that. Alright, does this guy ride the subway every day? Notice there's like four groups of people who ride this subway. Alright, we need to go to the police station. It's not the street, it's off of... Uh, Metro West or Metro West? That's where we need to go. Alright. Let's head on down this way and head for the police station. And then we will offer our nice, refreshing bingo cola to the policeman who's waiting there. And it's still shuddering. Man. Would you like a cold soda, officer, to wash away the dust? Much obliged, ma'am. Oops. Damn! Damn it! I have to get to the service office before my suit short circuits. Okay, let's get this straight. I feel so bad. And I love it. Let's get this straight. We have advanced power armor worn by police officers that will short out if it gets wet. What happens if it rains? Maybe they have weather control and it never rains in Newport or something, but does that even make sense? Yes, I know it's an adventure game, so you have to do it in order to... Oh, well. Wow. We're going to take this mirror shard now because we have to get past this laser fence so we can get to the anti-grav here. I saw this on an episode of MacGyver 2200. I'm glad to see they remember my MacGyver in the future. That means a lot to me. Then we've also got the um, anti-gravity unit, so I guess we'll take that off with a screwdriver. Is it not going to be useful? I have to look at it first. AG control unit is fastened tight with a couple of big screws. Yanking it free might damage the unit. All right, now will you let me use the screwdriver? Silly game, not letting me jump ahead. All right, we now have an AG unit. So let's head back and talk to Burns again and give him what we've got. Apparently there's no need for that guy to call in for backup before he left either. I don't know if he'll come back if I wait too long before doing that. I don't know if he does, whether I can get another can and try again. Remember, I can't get back into the police station because of the bug. Let's go talk to Burns. Yes, we've seen it already. Thank you. Oh, and I want to do a static skip here. We... There we go. And why does Burns just leave those garage doors open? He was so concerned with security when April showed up that he hasn't bothered to close the doors again since she came back. I mean, I'm not sure whether that expresses overconfidence or underconfidence or what that is. Hey Burns, we got something for you. Hey, Burns? I'll be right up! Is this what you need? Whoa! Heavy duty! That baby's worth just enough for me to get you top of the line all access ID, babe. Yeah! Hey, with this, I might even be able to zoom on out of here once in a while. Excellent. So how soon can you have the ID ready? Uh, a couple of days. A couple of days? I need it now. Oh, no, 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 no. Ain't gonna happen. Shit takes time, you know? Shit takes time. Tomorrow night at the earliest. 
Can't promise anything, though, but I'll certainly try for the little girl. All right, so we've got an ID coming in. There's a kind of an odd interface issue here. Because sometimes the game will let me talk to someone, like when I gave Warren Hughes the paperwork about him and his sister, I could just talk to him and it automatically was given to him during the conversation. Whereas here, I, if I had tried to talk to Burns, you notice I didn't even try, he'll come up and talk to me, but I don't, don't have an option to even offer him the... Um, I don't have an option to even offer him the anti-gravity unit. I have to click on him with the anti-gravity unit. So it's kind of a, you know, bit of an inconsistency there. I'm wondering if there were different teams working on different parts of the game, and that's how that particular inconsistency came up. And the opposite condition was there when Warren, if I had tried, I couldn't even give Warren the um, papers. If I took them in my inventory and clicked on them, it wouldn't do anything. So. Oh well, just one of those additional puzzles. Kind of a meta-puzzle, if you will. Uh, we had promised Cortez that we would talk, meet him this afternoon up at the Hope Street Cathedral. So let's head back to Hope Street and talk to... Where's Hope Street? There it is. And go to the Cathedral and talk to Cortez. Actually, we're going to eavesdrop on Cortez and the priest talking for a bit. That's how we roll. And everything happens near the confessions. I'm sure that's... Important. Stirring up support for their ideas. And Arcadians, those easily misled sheep, they embrace these ideas because they prophesize change. And change is always attractive to humans. Not only humans. The Vanguard are using a tyrant to force their changes into effect. They say the tyrant have turned to religion, that they... Ah, the tyrant! Those beasts are not much for loyalty, but promise them money and power. The vanguard are probably ready to offer them half of the Northlands, perhaps even Mercuria itself for their services. And they have certainly wanted to put their filthy claws on that city for as long as I can remember. Yes, it's beginning to look quite bleak. What about the girl? I think she may have seen the light, finally. She does not know even half of what is going on, and if she did... I do not think she would be able to handle it. Better she does not know. Aren't you worried that the fate of the balance in our worlds is in the hands of a... a child? A simple country girl? Of course. I do my best to help her, as does the mother in her way. Still, April will be on her own soon enough, and then... who knows? After all, she is the one. No one seems to doubt that. The balance knows. And the balance provides. And if the balance believes in this girl, we should as well. Spoken as a man of true faith. But of course, Father. You're not the only one who places his faith in higher powers. Speaking of higher powers, I have to go prepare my sermon for tonight. And what lessons will be taught today? You know the usual. Sacrifice, devotion, faith. The cornerstones of any religion. Even the vanguard seem to follow these tenets. They require devotion through faith just as much as we do. Good night, Raul. Que Dios te bendiga. Uh, yeah, so obviously there's a lot Cortez hasn't told us yet. And, um, how are they getting information from Arcadia? They said that, you know, neither of them, or Cortez at least is not a shifter. He can't travel. April's the only one who can. And, okay, well, we'll just assume he has plot-related reasons for able to be, being able to do it, so let's go talk to Cortez. It's beautiful in here, don't you think? So quiet, so spiritual. See, I'm no Catholic, but I still like coming here to meditate, to pray if you want. If you're not a Catholic, who do you pray to? To the universe, to the balance. To the rock in this floor, and, and the air around us, to you and, and to myself. What is that, Buddhism? It's life, senorita, pure and simple. So, what did you dig up today? Oh, nothing, except for everything you ever wanted to know about the Vanguard and Jacob McAllen. You got the information? You found Warren? He helped you? 
Eventually. It wasn't easy. But I know where to find McAllen, and I'm working on how to get there. I should be all set by tomorrow. Good news. And just in time, too. Things are not going well out there. What do you mean? The balance is collapsing. And magic is seeping through into this world. Stark is still protected by its strong currents of logic and order, but Arcadia is on the brink of war and utter chaos. Unless we act quickly, Arcadia will fall into disorder, and Stark will follow. Can't we get help? Everyone with the power and will to help is doing so. But you are so much more important than anyone else. You can travel to Arcadia to bring order to chaos, at least until we find the Guardian and return him to his realm. What about the Vanguard? We investigate your lead tomorrow, yes? If we find what we are looking for, if they have the Guardian or know where he is, then we are one step closer to victory. But we still need to find the entrance to his realm. And the situation in Arcadia is not getting any better, not without your help. I don't know anything. What can I do? By just being there, you are helping. You are strong in the balance, April. And your power flows into those you meet and helps them against the tides of chaos. Whatever you do, however you do it, you are helping. I still feel so... so helpless. I don't understand half of what you tell me, and as for the other half, I can't help being skeptical. Good. Do not trust everyone or everything, and make a stand against that which you do not believe. Just be sure to accept the truth when you find it, and embrace the good in the world. I'll do my best. What are we going to do now? Tomorrow, we will visit with McAllen, find what he knows and use it. Then the day after, you will go back to Arcadia. At most, we have a week. But it should be enough. As for today, relax. Be with your friends. I don't think I'll ever be able to relax again. We pay a heavy price for our knowledge, yes. But try to enjoy yourself, because the hard work begins in the morning. I will see you then, yes? Wait, wait! Where are you going to be this time? We will meet here, yes? I'm afraid I cannot go back to Venice. Not now. There are... people looking for me. The Vanguard? Yes. They know what I am, who I am. They will not rest until they have me. So we must work very fast to destroy them. Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow. Have a good night, okay? Be careful. Thank you, Senorita. And you. Alright, I notice at no point does she mention Gordon Holloway, even though it's obvious to us, at least, that Gordon Holloway must be the... Um, missing guardian but okay whatever uh, at this point we need to go back home basically we're going to go back to um, our apartment at the um, border house and things kind of get we're almost at the end of the chapter there's kind of a smash cut at the end of the chapter coming up but we have to do these last little bits so let's get back there and see what happens Houses in Venice. Well, where'd you go? There we go. All right. Oh, look, the skateboarders are back again. Guess they didn't learn their lesson last time. It's almost like it's a repeating scene. Oh well. And I do have a question here. Um, chaos is overtaking. Um, chaos is overtaking um, Arcadia. If one world is bleeding into the other, wouldn't magic be bleeding into Stark and order be bleeding into Arcadia? Wouldn't it be the opposite of chaos? Whatever. Oh look, there's Zack. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, I need to throw in one thing here. Remember the artificial plant over here, the one that has the organic plastic? Um, if you don't have a leaf from it, pick one up right now. This is going to be your last chance for a while. All right, let's go in and talk to some people. Charlie? Emma? 
What are you guys doing here? We locked ourselves in to wait for you. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. By the way, I think Zack was spying on you guys. I caught him leaning up against the door, and he hurried back into his room the second I arrived. He's such a loser. And he seems to have a personal vendetta against you now after what you did to him. Or what he claims you did last night. Gotta love the guy. So what's up? What's the occasion? We want to know what's going on with you, April. What do you mean? Nothing's going on. Don't lie to your best friends. That's way below you. We know something's going on. There's no point denying it. For three days straight, you've been away all day. You've been acting weird and hanging around Cortez, of all people. And then today we find out you've been up to Metro Circle by yourself? I mean, April, for God's sake, what is going on? Okay, I have a couple of questions here. First of all, how do you know she went up to April to Metro Circle by herself? How do you know April did that? Uh, have you been following her around yourself? Who reported that information? Second, how did you get into her room? Do you have a key? I mean, I would assume that maybe Charlie had one, but April was pretty adamant early on that Charlie was just a friend and that she had no under no relations with him beyond that. So, do her friends just have keys to her room? <sighs> Whatever. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Try us. We're your friends. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can help. Somehow. I've been... Uh, chosen to save the world. <laughs> Stop kidding around, April. We're serious. So am I. I told you, you wouldn't believe me. You're actually telling us the truth. What do you mean you've been chosen to save the world? As in, there's something really bad going down. I can't say exactly what, but Cortez is with the good guys, and I've been... drafted. Look, April, if you're having some kind of nervous breakdown, we'll do anything God, to... I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. Forget it. I don't even believe in myself. So why should you? I believe you, April. I've seen things these past few days, strange, inexplicable things. And my grandma taught us that there's more to this world than meets the eye. And after all, it's you saying these things. My friend, April. I've never known you to lie or even exaggerate the truth. If you believe it, I believe it. And I'm sure the same goes for Emma. Thank you, Charlie. It means a lot to me. I wish I could tell you everything, but I don't think I can. I understand. When you're ready. But if there's anything, anything at all we can do to help, well, don't hesitate to ask. There are a few things you could help me with. Great. What? Like I said, I can't really tell you very much about what's going on. Not yet, anyway. Tomorrow, after I've had a good night's sleep, I'll try explaining as much as possible. But there's one thing you can do for me. I have reason to suspect that somebody's out to get me, or Cortez. Who? Long story. But I could need some backup. These goons, these agents, they could be closing in. And whatever advanced warning you're able to give me... We'll do our best. What do they look like? I'm not sure, but you'll know when you see them. I'm sure. Anybody suspicious around, let me know. This is kind of exciting, but you gotta tell me, what are they after you for? Did you do something illegal? Not yet. Not really. It's what I might do that they're worried about. But please don't ask me any more questions today. Just keep your eyes and ears peeled for anything weird. I need a good night's sleep, and tomorrow I should be able to tell you more. But thanks for helping me out, guys. I really appreciate it. We're all hanging out at the cafe tomorrow night, April, so you're just gonna have to join us. I promise. Now get some sleep. Sorry to tell you this, but you look totally exhausted. I'm glad we had this talk. Thanks for checking up on me, guys. Sure. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night, girl. Sweet dreams. Would it have killed you to tell them anything, April? I mean, anything at all, and... <sighs> Does April sleep in her shoes? I, it could just be the way the character model is designed, but is she sleeping in her shoes? Yeah, April, you could have saved so much trouble if you just told them a few more details, but oh well. You're a video game protagonist. You have genre blindness. So. Is that. Oh, I guess Cortez is in trouble. Yeah, this doesn't look good, does it? 
and the game is about to have a very sudden smash ending. This, this is going to end very suddenly, so I'm... Noise? So I'm going to close off in just a second here. This literally ends this sharply. So until next time, this is Dennis. I am Tan Staff with the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time as we continue with Chapter 4 of The Longest Journey. See you then. Where's that light coming from?